Okay, good afternoon. If we can have your attention. Uh, welcome to Minot State University and the College of Arts and Sciences two-minute lecture series celebrating the liberal arts heritage here, around the nation, and beyond. Today we have with us Dr. Ron Fisher from uh, the Division of Humanities, and he will be speaking on creative writing when the character comes alive. Without any further ado, then, here is Dr. Fisher. We're going to read a poem, poem that I wrote uh, on Samson and Delilah. And let me be in the middle, and I'll have you guys. And just a few words I want to say, and it doesn't apply just to creative writing, but any kind of writing. But uh, the poem is, of course, is creative writing. But th the way to use your imagination is to become that character, to, to get out of your own self. And, and the way you, you can do that is take a story like Samson and Delilah. You probably heard it in Sunday school, right? You know the story. Uh, and you know what everybody said about it. But how can you make it your own? And I think with this one here, we're doing it from the point of view of Delilah. Put yourself in her shoes. What would it be like to be her? And, and, don't, and wash your mind of all the things that you've learned about it and that they've said about it. And just become, dream that person and then become that person. Now, you could get a whole novel out of that. But if you're writing an essay, you could say, you know, there are things that maybe should be said about Delilah that people haven't said. And you could get an essay out of that. So using your imagination is just entering into the dream world and becoming the dream of that person. So let's try it here with this poem called Delilah. <laughs> there I did it. What's done is done. I will keep these petrified locks of his hair. Go tell the hyenas Samson has lost his power. Let, Let them, them howl their, their wild laugh, laugh now. But my servant stands there with unbelieving eyes. Go shout it from the mountaintop. Spread the gospel of the secret. Don't stand there blinking and ask. How could you do it? How could you break a skull, scraping a razor across that virgin scalp? Did I have a choice? The world belongs to pretentious men, as if 3,000 mighty shekels means anything. What is a woman to do when hyena-mouthed men make the sca their scavenging demands. The secret of my power, he said, a razor has never shown my hair. You heard him say it, same as I did. How I ran the minnows of my fingers through his ringlets, prying apart each braid and dreadlock, petting each slick coral curl. This time he gave me complete trust, his unflinching faith in me, and that luminous truth suddenly released its hold on him. He was free of its talents. Am I sure? Need you ask? I felt his whole body shudder as the shackles of that hawk-eyed mystery he worshipped let go of him. And his head fell suddenly against my breast as if he were a nursing infant slipping into sleep while still suckling. I, I felt its power leave him, that iron hardness he carried from the eye-gouging spear that haunt his dreams. Gone, Gone the, the flesh flaying knife of his fierce giver pressed against his naked throat. throat. Gone, Gone the beheading acts of those blood-soaked priests who jabbed the nape of necks of their victims with their, their holy hatchet of awe. Yes, I felt too the untethered raptor of his secret leave him and sink its sharp claws onto my heart. How beautifully he lay in peace and ease against me like a man in a coma, drowned by an ocean of sleep, the blinding light of our world snuffed out by the forgiving comfort of surrender. You be the one, I guess, for blinking mine. Saw the horror I would bear from this day forward. I did what I had to do, I say. Go, you be the one to tell them. No, I had no desire for the silver shackles, nor was it his fierce passion to embrace pillows of my flesh. I loved with a pure love. A love no one else could ever give him. Not, not his, his giver, not, not his, his people, people not, not even his family. His family. Their, Their love was more leprous than money. money. They, they loved Samson for the savior they wanted him to be. For the lion killing, man stalking hero they so desperately had to have. They wanted him to be the razor-rusting keeper of vows, slave to that inferno of a circumcising giver he served. I loved him for the little boy he kept alive inside, the prankster who delighted in senseless riddles. The virgin lusting for the first beautiful woman his crystal eyes ever saw. The bratish child instantly wanting what was forbidden. 
the mocker who scoffed at those hyena princes by dragging off the precious gate of their city. Maybe I loved him for being the churlish child I never had. Maybe that was it. He could laugh so freely in their faces, something a woman can only do in secret. He loved too, but without fear. Unlike me, fear never touched him. Fear the giver or man never crossed his brow or clutched his throat. That is why he told me his secret. He wasn't afraid. Yet I let the whip of my words come biting and stinging out of my mouth. If you loved me, Samson, if you really loved me, you would tell me. Though I knew he loved me, I mocked him by saying he was afraid to tell the truth. I wanted the golden truth locked in the stronghold of his heart, and he gave it to me coin by coin. I knew then we were both lost. There, there is, is no, no room in this realm of promises, promises Jews, Jews and Philistines alike, for those who cross the lines of hate with whole heart and soul love. His strength is gone. They have blinded him, but, but love, love is stronger, stronger than, than death. death. Thank you.